Welcome everyone. This is the December 5th meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. We've already called the roll. We just came out of executive session. Um, the first order of business is to swear in some commission members. Um, and I see them here. Uh, we will start with uh, Dino Pilata. Do you want me to, should I, I don't want to go down there. Um, I. I. <laughs> Dino Pilata. Solemnly swear. <laughs> solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And will obey the laws. And will obey the laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the State of Ohio. And of the State of Ohio. That I will in all respects. And I will in all respects. Observe the provisions of the Charter. Will preserve the provisions, observe the provisions of the Charter. And ordinances of the Village of Yellow Springs. And ordinances in the Village of Yellow Springs. And will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Economic Sustain Sustainability Commission member. And will faithfully. Are you reading? It's not on here. It is on Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the Office of Economic Sustainability Commission. Of the Office of Ex Economic Sustainability Commission. Very good. Ooh. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Luciana? <laughs> I state your name. I, Luciana Leaf. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And will obey the laws of the United States. And will obey the laws of the United States. And of the State of Ohio. And of the State of Ohio. That I will in all respects. That I will in all respects. Observe the provisions observe the provisions of the charter and ordinances of the village of yellow springs of the charter and ordinances of the village of yellow springs and will faith faithfully discharge the duties and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of alternate of economic sustainability commission of the office of alternate economic sustainability commission yes very good thank you welcome <laughs> thank you uh, next, we and the other uh, appointee um, for the alternate for the Economic Sustainability Commission is Susan Jennings, and we will get her sworn in at another time. Um, next, we have announcements. Brian? Um, did I hear Library Commission is canceled tomorrow? Yes. Okay. So, uh, no Library Commission meeting tomorrow. Uh, I also wanted to mention the Arts and Culture Commission will be meeting on the 12th. A Monday instead of the uh, typical 14th and a um, few events that I think are worth noting around town one is uh, the school forest uh, festival is going to be happening this weekend mm -hmm. so you can get your trees from 9 to 3 p.m. Uh, out at the forest uh, Karen might also mention that there's a holiday sale happening right here at the uh, uh, John Bryan community pottery uh, on December 22nd, the Yellow Springs Brewery is having a fundraiser for the high school's, um, what is it, Global Connections Peru trip. That starts at 7. Um, also, on December 8th, Antioch College, the Herndon Gallery, has a very interesting opening. Um, the show is called Divided States, talking about sort of the uh, outcome a month later after the election. That opening is from 5 to 7. And uh, I did want to give a plug for the, uh, the wish tree, um, grant a wish tree at the library. Um, such a great thing for people to support. Great, thanks. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, in light of the recent presidential election, a number of cities across the country <clears throat> have um, made statements, resolutions in regard to things like being a sanctuary city and, and um, upholding the values in, of inclusivity, et cetera. And um, I've read some of these statements and it has been suggested by at least one citizen that Yellow Springs uh, considered doing something like that. So um, the, the Human Relations Commission discussed that at our last meeting and we plan on working on some kind of statement to bring to council and personally um, I would like to see well one that we do that two something that is a positive statement that for example reflects the values that Yellow Springs already has in its value statement but I just wanted to make that announcement okay Judith Jerry 
Um, two things. Um, the Gingerbread Fest Festival is this weekend, uh, this Saturday at Mills Lawn uh, from 11 to 2. Uh, Santa will be arriving from noon until 2. And there will be horse-drawn wagon rides from noon until 3. And you can either make a gingerbread house at home and bring it, but for kids, there's little gingerbread cookie con or cookie making kits, which are really, really sweet. There's also going to be a tyke shop for kids um, to do their gift buying. And I hope you all um, purchase a coupon book. Um, it is a shop local coupon book. It only costs five dollars, and there are great coupons for 16 local businesses um, that are good before the holidays and then there's also a second half of the coupon that's good for the first quarter after the holidays so it's a great great deal and it keeps all of the money local um, I think that's it uh, we have on the consent agenda the minutes of November 21st regular meeting can I get a motion please so moved second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. okay uh, review of the agenda anything we want to add or change on the agenda okay um, do we not have any petitions and communications we just have the mayor's monthly report okay um, and uh, business as usual okay sounds good um, then we'll move on we've got quite a bit of legislation um, a lot of it is emergency because of the fact that we are um, canceling our second meeting in December um, most of these are, are um, relatively standard so there isn't anything um, that uh, that should create an issue by being uh, by being a, a, an emergency ordinance um, let's read them in by title only um, the first one is 2016-33 Judy yeah this is approving a permanent easement for the purpose of installing a solar array on the property known as the glass farm and declaring an emergency okay uh, can I get a motion please so move second okay um, Patty I will turn this one over to you okay this is the easement that we um, essentially granted to ourselves earlier this year uh, setting aside approximately six and a half acres of the glass farm to erect the solar array array um, we are getting ready to also pass legislation um, to enter into the final solar power purchase agreement with a, uh, AEP on-site partners to erect that solar array so we have to give them the same easement that we gave ourselves to erect the array okay should we be having should we hear that well that's a resolution and this is an ordinance it it, it really it's six of one and a half dozen okay. of another I mean if for some reason we don't pass that piece of legislation though is there some concern with passing an or an easement giving them an easement uh, that would be a Chris question it says here that the um, if the power be terminated it was expires okay. this easement shall also be okay yeah. so um, any questions well, we'll just move forward with the easement then any questions or comments from council um, yeah I have a question um, are are we um, uh, liable for maintaining the property where the solar array is no the power purchase agreement will state that they're responsible for what will be inside the fence that protects the array and we're, we're responsible for what's outside the fence I know it I know the wording seems a little odd here and Chris and I had discussions about that but it's very clear in the power purchase agreement okay and I also have it clarified in an email from uh, AEP any other questions uh, this is the second read well it is the first reading but it's the final reading um, I will open the floor for public comment seeing and hearing none I'll bring it back to council table Judy would you please call the roll yes Housh. yes Hempfling yes Sims yes McQueen yes Winter yes uh, next is 2016-34 this is authorizing the transfer of funds from the general fund to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers grant fund and, and declaring an emergency. Can I get a motion, please? So, so moved. Second. second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you get to choose, Judy. <laughs> you, got, you got two and two. 
<laughs> it was a unison. Take your pick. <laughs> Um, Melissa, is this yours? Yes, to this explain? is mine. So this is coming ahead of the supplemental appropriations um, just because I wanted to make sure that the money was in place or at least approved um, prior to the appropriations being approved. So um, basically this is moving 262482000 from the general fund to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers grant fund um, in order to be able to pay the contractor that will be performing the work since we will not be reimbursed until following the completion of the work. So we need to make sure that we have funds in place um, to be able to pay the contractor. And then once we receive the reimbursement from the Army Corps of Engineers, then we will transfer the money back to the um, general fund. Okay. Um. Patty, do you have any, any information on when the work might be starting? Um, we actually had hoped to start it today, but we ran into a little issue with someone's fiber optic line. So we're meeting tomorrow to work out the details of where everything's going to run, and then they'll be starting. <coughs> okay. Um, any other comments or questions from Council? Well, so Melissa, are we still due to get more like 272000 back? Yes. Okay. And then we'll what transfer that all back to the general fund um, what I need to do is I need to um, take another look at the source of the fund so the amount of money that the uh, general fund is going to uh, transfer 100% of that will be put right back to the general fund but anything that's considered extra I need to try to figure out where the exact source of that was to make sure that it goes back to mm -hmm. the correct place gotcha okay. okay so it'll just take another look before we do anything but I've got plenty of time to do that okay uh, any other questions comments uh, this is a public hearing this is a emergency ordinance I will open the public hearing for comments from citizens is that about about this particular piece of legislation? Okay. Um, seeing and hearing none, I'll bring it back to council table. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes, Sims. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Kipling. <coughs> Did you Is that me? Oh. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. You're my sneezing during your <laughs> roll call. Housh. Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Okay. The next is 2016-35. And this is the sub 2016 Supplemental Appropriations and Declaring an Emergency for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Can I get a motion, please? So move. Second. <laughs> okay. um, Melissa, I assume this is yours. Yeah. So this is the end of year cleanup. Um, basically, anything that we spend has to be uh, passed through as an approval through the Greene County Auditor's Office. And so I always take a last look at the budget to make sure that we're going to end um, the year not spending any more than what we had already appropriated for earlier in the year. And there were a few areas where we were going to have to um, have uh, supplemental appropriations prior to the end of the year. So I have all of those in the ordinance format where we have the, the last um, approved budget, which is labeled as current budget. There is a middle column that's labeled supplemental, and those numbers tie to the supplemental appropriation worksheet, which is attached in the packet. And it outlines um, the different departments and uh, amounts and projects for which those amounts um, were tied to. So in the general fund, there were um, three departments which needed some supplements council administration and uh, public safety and most of those were tied to um, legal and um, some professional services and then some vehicle maintenance in the PD um, special revenue funds there was um, some more personnel costs that uh, were a result of the uh, annual um, pool um, closeout that we had and then um, in the capital projects funds um, we had an end of the year request um, for some upgraded equipment for uh, cable capital equipment out of that fund for which we've had money sitting for quite some time and then um, we are appropriating the money in order to pay the contractor for the utility extension on Dayton Hill Springs Road which we just spoke about so okay. all in all the appropriations total three hundred eighty eight thousand six hundred and thirty two dollars okay and so we'll be ending um 
2016 with a budget of $11,746 and or appropriations of $11,746 eight hundred and twenty dollars eleven million eleven million my god eleven million seven hundred and forty six thousand eight hundred and twenty three dollars correct um any comments or questions from council so the eighty two thousand uh supplemental for council what is that for <coughs> um that was for um professional services which included the uh design nine contract for the municipal fiber um, work that's being done and then um, there was also some glass farm work um, the geotechnical engineering things that were done so those were two pretty um, big ticket items that came towards the end of the year that were approved that we didn't budget for um, originally okay um, any other questions is this a, this is an emergency uh, reading um, I will open the public hearing for comment seeing and hearing none I'll bring it back to council table Judy yes Hempfling yes McQueen yes Sims yes House. yes Wintra yes uh, next is resolution 2016-61 this is authorizing the village manager to enter into a solar power purchase agreement with AEP on-site partners a subsidiary of American Electric Power Company Incorporated can I get a motion please so move second okay uh, Patty okay this is the uh, agreement with uh, AEP to erect and operate the solar array it's a one megawatt array uh, the village will purchase all of the energy produced by this field um, there are a couple of details uh, minor details to continue to hammer out um, one of them we resolved today um, as to how the the taxes on the property were, were going to be paid and through what mechanism um, but essentially this is the agreement I mean there will not be any substantial change to it I think uh, John Courtney and um, has been looking at it as has Greg Ottinger from Duncan and Allen who is our power um, attorney that has been working with us through this entire process and they both assure me that there will not be any substantial changes to this agreement um, from what you see in front of you today okay. I noticed a lot of blanks well the yes yeah, and most of the blanks um, are have to do with our purchase of the field down the road and those will be filled in before we sign this agreement pardon say more um, we will have the option at various points through the next 25 years oh. to purchase okay. the field outright I, I, I thought you were talking about a different field okay <laughs> so um, I should have said array that might have clarified it a little bit um, a little bit better but um, we'll have an option to actually purchase it outright at different periods for different amounts throughout the life of and one part of the contract I read it sounded like we could actually do it every year I mean we, I know there's one table that's you know 10 15 yeah. we we do have that option that just uh, it won't make much right. sense for us to do it within the next few years right. I mean, um, or we would have just built it ourselves to begin with so I think we I think we five years is the first time I have the option to buy it and what is our schedule on this one um, they probably won't start actual um, uh, construction until after the first of the year weather depending I mean, they want to get started so as soon as as soon as we sign it if the weather allows them they're going to get in there and put it up okay but and when do you how long the construction period when do you see it being operational it'll probably take three to four months would be my guess and then do we do the final connection or does do they Johnny wants to do the final connection himself I wonder uh, it doesn't surprise me um, any other comments or questions from council is that connection that John is going to do what's called the interconnection yes. facilities yes any comments or questions from citizens okay um, all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. Um, Judy let's read this next one in full okay, this is authorizing the village manager to enter into a contract no wait no you did that one 
um, 2016-62. Whoops, sorry. Proclaiming. <laughs> they stuck together in my, my bad. Um, this is proclaiming Sunday, December 11th, 2016 as Central Chapel AME Church Day in the village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Whereas Village Council desires to recognize the long history and deep significance of Central Chapel AME Church to the village of Yellow Springs, and whereas Village Council wishes to congratulate Central Chapel AME Church on its many significant contributions to the entire community, and whereas because Ch Central Chapel AME's church's life in the village has enabled citizens to access a wide variety of spiritual community events, and whereas Village Council celebrates the 150 years of Central Chapel AME Church's existence, and whereas Village Council desires to recognize the dedication and excellent work performed by Central Chapel AME Church, now therefore be it resolved by Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio that Section 1, Sunday, December 11th, 2016 is hereby declared to be Central Chapel AME Church Day in the Village of Yellow Springs. Section 2, this resolution shall go into effect upon adoption. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Um, Jerry, would you like to say a few words about <coughs> this since you brought it to Council? Right. Uh, as I, I, I know a lot of the community has been aware that Central Chapel started on January 1st of this year was their 150th year in, in existence. They've had a number of programs uh, within the community. They've had a banquet and so forth. And to, to everybody's surprise, they all thought I was uh, working on the resolution. <laughs> but no one told me to. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, uh, as a member of Central Chapel, for, for a number of years uh, in, in the influence that the church has had, not only on the Yellow Springs community, but the minority community within uh, Yellow Springs. Uh, we've had a, num a number of ministers come and go, but our congregation over the years has still been strong and continue to work and support uh, the folks of Yellow Springs. And, I feel this would be a nice recognition uh, for the church to have their day. Thank you, Jerry. We're honored to do this. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jerry, will this be presented yes. at? On the 11th. On the 11th? Right. At the church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I hadn't had a chance to, to get with Karen to see yeah. if she was available. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah. Yeah. And all council. You can make it. <laughs> what and time is the service? Uh, the service starts at 11. Great. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, it's and you know we really want do want to recognize important events and important things like that. So please bring those to our attention um, when things happen. Um, sometimes we do miss things, and uh, I'm sorry we spent a year. The whole year went through before we we recognized this one, but. Um, uh, next is 2016-63. And this is authorizing the village manager to enter into a contract closeout agreement with HNTB Corporation. Can I get a motion, please? So move. Second. Do we? Okay. That was Judith. <laughs> okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Pat, or, yeah, Patty, would you explain this? Um, as, yes. As we discussed at the last council meeting, uh, engineer Sam Swanson has left H&TB. H&TB um, was our criteria engineer of choice to, for the design build water plant. Sam was our engineer with H&TB. Uh, he has left H&TB and gone back to his previous firm, which is Burgess and Nipel. Um, and both firms agree, and uh, I concur, that it's best to keep Sam on the project because of his intimate knowledge from the beginning uh, and to stay with us through the entire build and the warranty period. So in order to do that, um, we have to close out our contract with HNTB and the next resolution will be passing a new contract with Burgess and Nipel to retain Sam's services for the remainder of the, the build and the warranty period, which is the, what we had left on our contract with HNTB. It's essentially the same contract. It's exactly the same dollar amount. We're getting the same services. In fact, they've actually thrown in a couple of uh, extra caveats to give us additional site visits throughout the period and things for the same amount of money. Okay. So, any comments or questions from council? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
And the next one. And as promised, this is authorizing the village manager to enter into an agreement between owner and engineer for professional services with Burgess and Michael Incorporated. Can I get a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Patty, I guess you just explained it. Yeah. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, now is the time in the agenda where we ask for citizens' concerns about items that are not on the agenda. We have a couple of old business and a new business <coughs> item. Uh, we ask that you come up to the podium and state your name and keep your comments to three minutes. Go ahead. Good evening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight about my concerns. Um, as we all know, uh, winter's you state your name. I'm sorry, it's Michelle Dean. Sorry. As we all know, winter is upon us, and the days are shorter, and the nights are longer. And I've noticed a large number of uh, unlit or poorly visible pedestrians and cyclists out at dusk and, and later. I was driving to the Wellness Center last week on Limestone near Xenia Avenue, and I came upon four teens walking four abreast in the roadway with their backs to oncoming traffic. I happened to see the glint of a skateboard one of the boys was carrying. All four boys were wearing black or navy clothing, making them even harder to see. Not to mention, I wasn't expecting to see a line of pedestrians completely across my lane of travel. I honked at them and they moved out of the road, and I stopped and told them how foolish and short-sighted their decision was to wear dark clothes and walk in the roadway, especially when there was a sidewalk just a few feet away. They were very polite and seemed to recognize their error in judgment, and they even referred to me as ma'am. Um, <laughs> if I hadn't seen them or if I'd been distracted, I could have easily hit all four of them at once. I could have ruined the day of four families, uh, and, and then including my own, uh, easily. Um, speaking from experience here, as a juvenile, I was struck by a vehicle um, as a pedestrian. It, it, it left a mark. An hour or so later, I was on my way home from the wellness center when I saw a small dog in the road ahead of me. Uh, I slowed as I approached, and I could see that the dog was on a leash. And as I got closer, I could see an adult male was walking the dog alongside the road, but again, he was wearing all black. Uh, I wanted to stop and tell him uh, how hard he was to see, but I was still upset from the earlier incident, and I was flabbergasted that this, that this had happened to me uh, <coughs> on both occasions, going to and from my one appointment in Yellow Springs, um, twice in one night, so I was two for two. Um, and I'd like to say that these incidents are only isolated to the weekends when the community fills with tourists and day trippers, uh, but I can't. This is routinely happening on weekday evenings. I see children and adults alike that are walking, jogging, and cycling on the wrong side of the road, not following basic traffic laws, and are not clearly visible. And I'd just like to ask the village if they could include a note in the monthly water bill reminding residents the importance of abiding by the general accepted rules of travel on our roadways <coughs> with an emphasis on nighttime safety to include wearing light-colored clothes, carrying a flashlight, or wearing something reflective, particularly on their front and back. And while I don't think that the village police should cite people for not following these rules, I'd like to see some community outreach um, for the department to stop, maybe in the form of a stop and educate when they come across someone who is hard to see or not following the basic roadway laws that keep pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists safe. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, thank what you. do you think of this? That's awesome. We're thinking about this is something that we're looking into. Is, okay. um, Judy, and could you give an update? Judy's been working on this okay. too, and we. I I, I, I posted on Facebook and I got a huge response, so yeah. apparently it is an issue mm -hmm. within yeah. the village. Judy, could you give an update and on what you're working on? Yeah, I, I spoke <coughs> with the high school principal and uh, the folks at Mills Lawn about, you know, can we do a little outreach for education, maybe use the police department, use your um, physical education departments, how can we kind of work together to do that? And so there's been a lot of communication among those groups of folks, mm -hmm. and the police department generously offered to purchase uh, basically a front and rear light for every kid in the school system and then oh, wow. today we fabulous and extras okay. so that the PD can hand them out to adults who are mm -hmm. also riding around invisibly as, yeah the adults are just as much mm -hmm. too Absolutely. and as a cyclist I try to obey the laws and I get really irritated when I see other cyclists that yeah don't and, and then they also agree we had another conversation about it today and they added in some agreed to purchase some more flashy things for those people who don't ride bikes mm -hmm. and just so that every kid gets 
a safety handout along with that message. Okay. So it is something that we're, we're working on, and, okay. and I know your, your Facebook post definitely had an impact in that direction. Oh. So. Okay. All right. Well, good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I appreciate that. Thank and you. the Active Transportation Committee has been talking about it, and I think that, that Judy is I, you know, I think that the education piece yeah. is really important, and, is. and yes. I would like that to be explored also. Yeah. Right. In fact, Green County Public Health said that they That's would yeah. love to be involved, and oh, they have fabulous. several trainers. Okay. Um, have have well, they approached you yet, Judy? No, I'm happy to, to get in touch with them because we've spoken a bit about it, Tim Pryor and I, but not, it, we're not at the point of getting specific, so it'd be great. Yeah. It, Bean, um, what's her first name? Um, Rodney Bean's daughter, Kirsten, Kirsten, yeah, Bean Kirsten is Bean. the person. Oh, she fantastic. came to the last meeting, and yeah, she's yeah. really anxious to be involved. Great. Is there some way that I could be involved in helping with anything? Is there a volunteer, or sure. could I leave my um, information? Could you leave your information with Judy or, or okay. her, or maybe email and her you, or call yes, her tomorrow? You phoned earlier, am I correct? So maybe just okay. Or email. Would, I know we had I can't remember. Contact. We'll figure it out yep. in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. All right. Judy. Thank you. Judith? I'm just thinking that um, that little flashy thing that somebody could carry on them mm -hmm. as they're walking down the street. I'm just thinking the, um, the library, Tom's Market, the Emporium, you know, that there might be some key places where there could be an information piece and where if we're giving these away that can sort of both the information's there for people to think, oh yeah, I do that, I know I do that. <laughs> like a, um, a, a Bulletin board or yeah, a flyer. Yeah, maybe to, some flyers and walk in the direction little, of the traffic. Maybe we could put some little, uh, set up some little uh, information things in some sem in several of the kind of locations mm -hmm. that people go. Different Large. kinds of people go different places. I've maybe. noticed it horribly this year. I don't know if it's just all of a sudden this year. Maybe more people are out. It's been a little bit milder, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But I have, I've, I had a real issue yeah. with it too. So. Um, MV, Judy, MVRPC, and I can get you some contact information. They actually did a, a large advertising campaign about wearing, about being visible at night, and so they probably have some resources also that they could put towards it. Okay, thanks a lot, Michelle. Thank you. So your your Facebook post did a lot. Yes, yeah. it did. Good job. <coughs> um, anyone else? Chris. What's the paper? <laughs> um, I'm here, uh, Patty, Purdy and, uh, Patty Purden and I, Chris Zerbukin, are here to talk about the Glass Farm Conservation Area Parking. So this letter is written to Village Council. As neighbors to the Glass Farm, we're delighted that the Tecumseh Land Trust and the Village of Yellow Springs can make use of the funding of the Clean Ohio Grant. The wetlands has become a treasure and a pleasure. December 4th, Tecumseh Land Trust gave a walk and talk on the glass farm to explain their plans for the grant. An item we disagree with is the suggested parking lot on the property off King Street at the northeast corner of the conservation area. It calls them to mind the lyrics of Joni Mitchell's big yellow taxi. They paved paradise and put in a parking lot. Couldn't resist, I'm of that generation. <laughs> the reasons for not wanting a parking lot on the conservation area is one, to keep the greens, the space green, security, and maintenance. A su <coughs> suggested solution to visitor parking is to use the existing roads for parking. There's adequate parking on Ridgecrest and Robinwood for up to four to six uh, vehicles. Future parking spaces could be planned on the west side of King Street by putting in culverts and paving parking bump outs. The remaining gravel that's left uh, at the parking lot construction site could be put at the southeast corner for walking access to the area from King Street. This gives two access points from King Street without going into the Thistle Creek neighborhood. The Westgate neighborhood children are among the bravest in Yellow Springs, as there are no lights 
a no street lights between Thistle Creek and Robinwood Street. They bicycle and walk in the dark. When King Street parking is installed, perhaps street lighting can be too. Being mindful, however, to keep a cap on the lights so that we can continue to star great, to continue to watch the stars as we walk on the glass farm. Those are my comments. I just would like consideration that the parking lot not be put on the conservation area. And Mary Ann and the um, ecology group and the Tecumseh Land Trust were wonderful as far as listening to our comments. And I'm looking forward to working with the group. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Marianne? Yeah, yeah, I can say a little bit. Um, so I, I has, have all of the council members been on the Glass Farm area, do you know? So as you know, there has been, for <coughs> a couple decades anyway, a road, basically just a dirt road that goes off King Street and goes up the, along the northern part of the Glass Farm and then sort of curves and dumps out onto Ridgecrest. Yep. Sort of curves. And at the bottom, near King Street, um, we thought that was a perfect area for putting in a little gravel parking area. So there's a 30 foot by 60 foot area that we defined for parking. We figured it could handle maybe five cars and a bunch of bikes. Um, we thought this was a pretty benign thing and it's, it's acceptable within the grant and we had included it in the grant. And um, so while we did let neighbors know that this, uh, we were working on the, um, the conservation area, we didn't let neighbors know that we were gonna put a, a little parking area there. Because as I said, from speaking for myself, it seemed very benign. Um, so Bob McLean, who is the contractor, was in the process of, he's actually excavated the 30 by 60 foot area. He's dumped, oh, probably a third of the gravel. And then while he was doing that, Patty came and I think called, Patty Purden called Patty Bates and maybe Karen. And I talked to Patty and I went out, talked to Bob. We got him to stop to see whether there was any other place that made sense. So I've met with Jason Hamby and Bob McLean and they estimate anything else, whether it's along King Street or going into King Street, would add at least a $5,000, probably more expense, which would include tearing out trees, tearing out tree roots, probably putting in a culvert, uh, whatever needs to go into that, plus filling in the existing excavating place that's already been done. So when, when they told me that, my response, and I told Patty and Chris, that you know, our grant team, that's, that's beyond the scope of our grant team beyond the scope of the grant, we're paying $3,000 for the parking area. We ha there's not a $5,000 or $6,000, whatever it would be, additional funding to change. And so at that point I said, look, you guys, you need to come to council. We need to kick it back to the village and uh, have the village look at this. Is it worth changing? <coughs> you know, I think staff, maybe the police department need to get involved. How much safety issue is it? it I, I did measure it. It's 65 feet from Patty Purden's back property, and there's a lot of shrubs and trees there. I mean, some of the concerns are sort of competing, whether for safety, you want it more open. For privacy, you want it more closed. So, <laughs> uh, so that's what's the, Can, what's the <coughs> safer to Pardon? do it this way? I didn't hear. Why is it safer to do it your way? safer. I thought you brought up as a safety issue and I, I'm not understanding why. Yeah, this it, it is was safer. we were opposed to the parking lot because yeah, I, of security. But of but, people of the people why, that are visiting why is it or safer what? Not to have a uh lot. yeah, I mean it's you've got a parking lot that's secluded. And but, that but if people are on glass farm, I mean if people are at the at the area, I'm not sure what and no, we're inviting date, people. Date time is fine, you know. Uh, let me rephrase that. You can see people at daytime, but it's not to mean that cars are not going to be there at nighttime. If you have it parking 
for access to the uh, walking area, if you have parking on existing streets, it can be more easily policed by anybody driving by, by the police driving by. Whereas if you have something isolated, it's not as well policed. Okay. Um, we, ha we have gone over different ideas. <coughs> uh, one is to have a gate, close the gate at night, only let people, and truly only people in there at night would be like if people are going in on educational tours or, or neighbors are going in at night. Another has, as Chris mentioned, putting up lighting near the parking area. And I think the no. issue of lighting on King Street on that stretch that you mentioned is a separate issue regardless of whether there's parking or not. And that may need to be addressed. But that, I think that's a separate issue. And that could be, uh, uh, you know, whether you have a funding source for street development and make King Street wider on the west side of the King Street to allow more flow of traffic and parking. But the, we don't particularly want lighting at the parking lot. We would prefer lighting on the street. Okay. This, I mean, to me, this is a perfect example of how we're going at all of these projects in a piecemeal manner. I want to plan with all of Glass Farm on it. I want to know where all of this stuff is. I want to know where the solar field is. I want to understand. I want to see their neighborhood. I want to understand how this all integrates. Is there any emergency for us going forward with this parking lot? Can it just stop for right now? Mm -hmm. So just leave it as it is. Um, don't spend any more money on it. Um, I would hope that as we move forward on developing the glass farm that we have a more elegant solution to bringing people into that. I, I would hope that the housing or whatever is developed on there that we're integrating in with the conservation area in a much more elegant way so that this isn't even necessary? Well, okay, there's no emergency, but we have contract, part of what we're supposed to do for the grant is put a parking area in. But what's, what's the time frame? Uh, a year. We have another okay. year on the grant. Um, so I'm saying we can't just not do right, it. Right, okay. Um, I talked to Krista today. She felt like we could do, they could do with that half of the lot, you know, I think half of it's done or half of it's, that maybe that is probably well, large enough. I doubt that's going to make the neighbors happy if they don't want any parking. Um, what did the police think, Patty? Um, well, Chief is out of town, but I did talk to Sergeant Watson today and asked her if they had any specific concerns about <coughs> where it's supposedly located right now, as opposed to would it be easier for them if it were on the other side or something? And she said the PD has no preference that they can monitor it and, and patrol it, whether it's where it is now or on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the culvert. I think was one of the locations that you, perhaps you talked about with Jason, um, to where you talked about clearing the trees and that. PD has no preference. They they say they can safely and adequately patrol it whether it's on one side or the other. But if, if it's a place where people like to stargaze, I don't want the police, so the police aren't going to say you can't be here after dusk, are they? they? Not unless council makes that a rule. They would just patrol it for safety reasons like they do yeah. Ellis Park or, like you know, Gaunt Park. Or, it, would have the, it would have the same regulations that our other recreational spaces have. I mean, the reason for mm -hmm. the parking is because of the concern that cars will park on King Street, right. right? Which I think is a real concern. And I mean, we can't start, we don't have money to invest in widening or improving yeah. King Street or right. doing anything to add right. parking <coughs> on King Street. Um, I don't see that being, being necessary, but um, I don't know. I mean, it, what do you I, think? I will say one other thing. Because it's going to be zoned conservation uh, with an easement, we can't put a road. We cannot put right. a um, paved road through where that existing road is. But, just, but, just so but I would assume that there would be a way to integrate parking into wherever the new development is that could be used well, for this. Yeah, you're talking about years down the I road. I understand that. I understand and, that. And I'm understand. happy to do whatever council wants to do, but I, we do need to ha address the parking within this next year for the, that area. Uh, my, my concern is that 
you know, prior to us making it a conservation area, there was the only vehicle traffic that even went up there was when when Jason and the crew were mm -hmm. working on water retention. Mm -hmm. Now that we've opened it up and, and saying that it is a, a conservation area, we've advertised for people to come. Mm -hmm. Now, now when you do that, and Prior to the gravel being dumped, it was a field, and it was rut, rut ruts, Rutting. Mm -hmm. real bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you follow me? And you know, with Jason's equipment or, or just my little jeep going through, you get one of those ruts when it's raining. We've got problems. So you know. I, I went out and, and I saw where the parking was, but without the parking, we're going to have to put something in there because we're getting into the wet season, and and people are going to want to go out there, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know we're going to have tow bills or or someone's going to have a tow bill because people are going to get stuck. So so to me. Maybe we could hold off on the parking, but we still need a little, a little trail f that's, well, that's covered so that you know vehicles can, can get in, in and out. Is there gravel on the on the road? On the, is there gravel on the access piece? Uh, well, no, see, uh, Bob put gravel from King right. Street in up to and a little bit past yes. the western edge of the parking area, but and then there's a dump of gravel on the northern side of that gravel mm -hmm. hey, gravel roadway. <clears throat> but on either side, it's just dirt. And like Jerry said, if people start pulling in there and it's mud, they might get stuck. Yeah, Judith. Basically, Bob has almost finished what he was going to do. He probably has he a just couple needs more to spread out gravel the and needs gravel. to spread it out. So, I mean, one option would be just to put it in, see how it goes. If it doesn't go, Put a gate or something over there. And I, I, I don't, I don't know. Well, one other thing, I travel uh, Trayvon every day and going to Beaver Creek, and, and they mm -hmm. had that big preserve, mm -hmm. and they did gravel over it, but over time, the gravel has settled and little grass and stuff mm -hmm. goes up. But the, it's a hard enough surface now that you know traffic comes in and out, and it. You know, and I believe so, they have a gate there. Is that the where where they well, go in for hunting? Uh, yeah, but uh, it's it's far enough off the road so the cars, you know, they can park and then mm -hmm. instead of a gate they have like uh, telephone poles so mm -hmm. the cars can't go through. You can you can walk walk through. So they kept cars from from driving through, mm -hmm. but they made it so that people can pull in and park and you know. Now the aesthetics are the same. You know, mm -hmm. it, it looks like you're driving into a open field. Mm -hmm. But it's just got a harder yeah. surface. The gravel, where the gravel grass has settled. Kind of come yeah, up. So, Judith, you know, what were you so. gonna? I feel like we should go ahead with this. This has been being worked on for a long time. The suggestion is great in terms of putting side, uh, parking on the street, but to me that sounds like an incredibly expensive idea. But my suggestion is for now, let's complete this. These guys have worked on it for a long time. And let's see how it works. Let's, why don't we relook at it? Is it a problem? Is there a problem that evolved from it? And then we can address that. But I hate to see us, you know, at this point, you know, I mean, I don't, I, I don't actually, I mean, I hear what you're saying. It's a little more secluded. I mean, maybe there's a way to make it a little less secluded. Uh, maybe on that edge, I don't know if there's bushes and stuff yeah, that could be cleared away the bushes can be so that they could, so, so it could be visible from the street. It seems to me you kind of got the same deal then. It's visible. I mean, may, does that sound, you know, if it's more visible from the street. Um, and then let's. And is there, is there a need to add any <coughs> privacy to to, to, to buffer it from the neighborhood side, from the residential side? I mean, side. it's, and it's, it's uh, generous to the neighborhood to say, well, you could park over here and then walk in that way, and maybe in the spring. But I don't know if all your neighbors will agree with you, but <laughs> knowing how these things and, go. And I, I mean, I but. think the access there is really, I, I don't think 
people even know Robin Wood. People don't even know that well, we'd have those to roads sign exist, it. right? Have and then which and that could, but that's not going to happen. This I I don't I don't the idea of of forcing people into a neighborhood like that just doesn't yeah, I'm thinking make a lot of sense to yeah, me. Yeah, but I I mean my thought is let's make it a little more visible so that when you know people drive by they can see the cars. My guess yeah, is it's not going to be that much used mm -hmm. in the in the in the cold weather. Uh, so but we'll definitely love to make yogis. it more, more visible because the way it is right <laughs> now, it's a very small entrance. Okay. It's, it's fine in, in the fall, in winter because the leaves are gone. But once that goes uh -huh. again, yeah. well, maybe I, that's I can the thing. I can see the, the neighbors' concerns because it it gets very high and, and very dense in that area. Uh -huh. and, Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a simple solution. Well, that we could what try. could be done is cut down all the honeysuckle, first of all, along King Street, which we are going to do anyway. If that still doesn't give enough uh, visibility at King Street, the scrub, some of the scrub trees could be cut down there too. And I had also said to Patty that we could put up some kind of either planting on the north side or or some kind of to wooden structure. It's walking. only her house, I think, that. Her and her it's neighbor. Very yeah, well. Yeah, it's more than it doesn't. Space, when I stood there, I couldn't see any other uh, houses from that place. It's primarily <coughs> oh, it's somewhat. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Visible. I agree with that resolution. I mean, I think that um, just clear some of the trouble yeah. away. Go ahead with it. Make and it more if visible. A problem, you know, you, if that doesn't feel, and in the spring put some plants, then kind of see. Mm -hmm. Usually, though, once once something's put in place, it, it's kind of there forever, and we would just rather have the parking be on the street. But I appreciate your comments, and and I would like to. I'll work with the environmental and the Tecumseh Land Trust to um, look at uh, the access point into the conservation area on the southeast <coughs> corner, because that's ideal to have two spots coming in on each side of the creek. We, I'm delighted with what Tecumseh Land Trust is, is doing. Uh, it's very exciting to have the boardwalks and, and it's a great educational opportunity. It's just the concern of security uh, for having a parking lot on the property. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. We'll stay in touch. Then. Any other um, citizens' concerns? Uh, my name is Chrissy Cruz, and a few months ago, after the changes went um, in force on the utility bills, I started having problems paying my utility bills. I have seen an incredible fluctuation in my bills, and after having for many years always paid my utility bill on time, I found myself getting behind and not being able to keep up with it. And um, that's something I'm going to go into in another meeting because I haven't pulled all the numbers up yet and figured out everything to do with it. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because it brought to mind to me that <clears throat> the reason that I was most concerned was because since council was concerned that the village was losing $14,000 a year to people who could not pay their utility bills, they were now going to be sending out a notice to my landlord telling him that I was behind on my bill. And I did not need that anxiety on top of already worrying about how was I going to pay my bill. So that, that was a number of $14,000 that the village felt was important enough to do what I basically myself kind of think of as a public humiliation. You're shamed. Your, your landlord is told she's not paying her bills, she's not keeping up. You may think of it otherwise, but that's how I think of it. And it brought to mind another time that I thought of the number $14,000 a year. And that was that last year, before the hotel was completed, the village thought about asking for an excise tax of 3% on the hotel rooms. And the hotel owners were opposed to that, so we tabled it. And oh, well, we'll come back to it maybe next year, which it has not come back up. So I did the numbers. And I have been told that the hotel has 28 rooms, average of $150 a night for these rooms. And they have been rented for the next two years um, completely. So if you add that up, 28 rooms average $150 a night, and we'll just save for the weekends. Two nights every week, 
um, 52 weeks, you get a total of, for each, at a 3% excise tax, you get a total of a little over $13,000. And that's just the rooms for the weekends. So I want to know why, if it was so important to the village to recoup this $14,000 for utility bills, why aren't we going after this money as well? Because it's probably more when, when you add up the other nights that the hotel rents rooms. And especially considering at the time, um, I mentioned that we put in over a quarter million dollars worth of infrastructure work for the hotel, that I asked Patty Bates at that meeting if that work would have had to be done if it were not for the hotel. And she said no. She assured me that it was done specifically for the hotel. So I want to know when Village Council is going to readdress this issue with the excise tax for the hotel. The downtown area since the hotel opened up has been more packed with people. So the village is still investing even more into the hotel. And I just think that when you question why people think that the lower income people in the village aren't being supported at the ex at, at, and the higher income people and the businesses and the tourist industries are, this is a prime example. So I'd like to know when council is going to readdress this issue. Thanks, Chrissy. Uh, any other citizen concerns? Okay. Well, in regard to what Chrissy was saying, I think we <coughs> said we would wait a year right, after that's, operation. Yes. That's Which, my understanding. Uh, and I mean, I, I will continue to recuse myself from that vote, but um, I, um, that was my understanding just from reading the minutes. And so that date would be April. I think that they opened in April of 2016. Mm -hmm. Um, moving on to so, uh, so the, given that that says that council would probably readdress that issue uh, mid year uh, 2017. Is that safe, safe to say? That if you wish to readdress <coughs> it, yes, it, it, you did yeah. decide to wait yes, a year. Yes, I think we should readdress it. Okay, so would, when would you like that to be on the agenda? I mean, I, to me, it makes sense if you're going to do April, I mean, if it, to, to look at the anniversary date right. mm -hmm. and just at least to maybe start the discussion yeah. um, since that was. Right. Yeah, May at the earliest so that you get all, okay. all of the year's data. I will make that note. Um, I, I guess I want to say I was always, a, I was opposed to the policy that made this, made the um, uh, land Lords responsible for the electric bill, which is the rationale behind this, because you're going to be held responsible for it, um, because I and I uh, because of the concerns I had that it would tighten landlords' practices around who they rent to, because of uh, you know not wanting to get uh, end up having you know uh, bills that they needed to pay you know, added expenses uh, to their business. And, um, and I've been uncomfortable with um, the idea that we're sending these letters to landlords also. Um, I wonder if we should re-look re at that issue at some point. I, I, um, it's, it's not a practice that I feel is friendly at all to people of lower income. I think it's, it's uh, and I think uh, housing is pretty expensive in town already, and it may, it's one more when you're already of modest or low income and um, you're trying to hold it together. Why don't people pay their utility bills when they're due? Because probably they're trying to balance a lot of bills that you know they don't have quite have enough money for. So I would love to see us relook re at that policy. I'm just going to say that for now, but yeah, um, just to say I, that. We can talk about it during during goals. Um, okay. Or when we talk about our goals. Yeah, thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the sidewalk discussion. I believe uh, Brian um, wanted uh, to continue that. Um, uh, so, Brian, I'll turn it over to you. Well, I mean, I think the, I felt like we didn't, 
have enough time to talk about it uh, at the last meeting, but I'm not exactly convinced that we have new information either. Um, right. I mean, I want to start with emphasizing my concerns about the ADA piece, um, <coughs> and uh, and then you know, and of course, uh, Melissa sort of raised the issue of. Are we actually dedicating those funds to uh, repairing the sidewalks? You know, mm -hmm. are we actually going to deliver on that piece? Um, so I don't know, Patty. Did you? Um, Melissa and I have talked a little bit um, since the last meeting, and we would like to work jointly on uh, a, a brief for council that um, addresses a couple of concerns that we have um, with the status quo and a couple of ideas that we have for. Um, maybe helping the situation a little. Um, we have started work on that brief, but it isn't ready for council yet, and we hope to have it for, for January, if okay. that's okay with everyone. Sounds good. Yeah, because I, I think that maybe folding it into <coughs> working on the goals. Might right. Be. I assumed it would be part of that. I mean, so. Yeah. Uh, are we, is, is what Jason sent out about the um, bicycle path? Is that part of this discussion, or are we? You know, I, I'd kind of like to hold on that. I, I don't think anything is going to happen. I mean, it's between now and <coughs> because of the winter. Right. Okay. I did have one suggestion, or I don't know. I thought I'd like to have a little conversation with council. He mentioned that um, Jason did that um, the whole issue of clearing the downtown. Um, the fact, it sounded like, if I read it correctly, now I can't find the wording, um, the fact that we don't prohibit parking right downtown when we're having big snows come <coughs> makes it that much more difficult. And I wondered if we should have some kind of rule like that at, you know, when we a know. A certain amount of snow. When we're mm -hmm. expecting a certain amount of mm -hmm. snow, that it could just be posted simply. I don't know if that's a. Well, it I, used to be signed. It, it, yeah, there is a snow emergency ordinance, yeah. um, but you know we have so many people that park on the street, and then what has to happen officially for there to be a, a snow emergency declared is, uh, depending on how the ordinance reads, someone is in particular is responsible for declaring that, and that person, which I would assume would be Karen. I haven't read the ordinance for a while, so I don't remember exactly or the president of council would notify the police department and the road crews and then the PD would we'd put it out on Facebook the PD would try to notify the people who are parked there to get them to move but if they don't move then you would have to tow the cars so that's always been a stumbling block because we hate to tow people's cars if we don't have to but yeah we, it is not we do have it in place but it's not enforced I guess is the way it's not yeah. implemented and enforced the way that it needs to be if we want to solve that particular problem. I think we've done it at least once a year. I think we've had to, to declare a snow emergency and remove the cars. My concern with, with having it be a, a certain amount of snow is that nobody's really going to know. How, how does anybody know that? And with so many people living downtown, so many people spending time downtown, mm -hmm. I would prefer it being a a period like give people at least a day's notice to yeah, say absolutely. take your car yeah. you know you got to get your car off the road mm -hmm. I think we I would like us to be a little bit more aggressive about it mm -hmm. not you know not wait until the piles get as piled as high as they are right I mean one thing that you can do with a snow emergency <coughs> uh, is you can you can put out precursors like for instance I looked at the internet today and they're technically saying we could get three to five inches of snow on Thursday so you could say on Wednesday, hey, you know, they're still predict predicting that we're going to get three to five inches of snow. Please be aware, snow emergency will be declared if this happens. Move your cars off of the main streets. Can, okay, can, can, we, can we ask our staff to potentially work, do that in the morning? I mean, can we set hours for that work to be done that would be inconvenient and probably overtime for staff, but would be more convenient for the people downtown well the first thing you have to remember is we don't plow 68 right this we're talking about ODOT yeah right and well we're also no we're talking I well that could be part of it but it's also about 
cleaning the sidewalks. It's also about the curb edge mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. don't clear because there's always cars sitting there. So it really does, that comes down to us clearing that. But if, but if ODOT goes through after we go through, and we, we, let's just say we clear the side because nobody's parked there, which, I mean, that's what we do with street sweeping. But ODOT's gonna come through and throw the center, <laughs> center stuff back over there anyway. So. Yeah, that was the way, I, what I understood from Jason's, uh, you know, write-up was that we want to clear those cars so that ODOT can take care of it. I mean, do we, Will they? They will if the, they, car, if the cars are out of the way, they will. I mean, they won't, what they won't do is if, if you're, they're going down the street and there are a, there's a car here and there's a car four up, they won't go in and out. They'll go, but, they'll go straight. But if there are no cars but there. But they'll, they'll do four lanes. They're supposed to go through, do the center lanes back and forth, and then come back and do the sides back and forth. That's what they're supposed to do. Well, I mean, no I, would want that I would want that clarified. I mean, and that is actually something, there's something to be said for that. I mean, that's the way they're supposed to do it if, in fact, there are no cars in the way. And then that would just leave us to clear the sidewalk. What accumulate up on the sidewalk. Right. Mm -hmm. If it but gets high enough to be a, high. an issue, yes. Because <laughs> the last Which, the last time I did it with them, uh, at the Latin was a couple of years ago. We had that big snow. Uh, you'd be surprised the amount of night traffic, mm -hmm. and, and I'm talking semis that come through town, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you, you have no way really to reroute though. You know, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, you know, so it's it's. You know, uh, but rerouting isn't necessary. It's just keeping it, keeping the keep, cars off from parking, and, keeping the cars from parking. And we did not have a problem that night. Right. And, and generally, yeah. our crews are out getting the main streets earlier right. than ODOT comes through right. because they do a lot more roadway than we do. Yeah, and the citizens were, were responsive. You know, mm -hmm. I think we had a couple car, cars. We contacted them. They came to Mooden right away. So well, they, if if they're parked there extended hours chances are there are people that live they, there or right. frequent right. downtown so, so they should understand right, right. the necessity right. of getting the sidewalks right. cleared um, I would like Jason you know to set up a meeting with the downtown businesses or really to set up some kind of a protocol mm -hmm. for the downtown businesses to know what to do and I wonder I mean can we can we pick a parking spot can we to push snow into I mean I'm thinking about what the merchants are doing with sidewalk snow. That's also an issue. It's not just the snow coming from the street, it's the sidewalk snow. And how do we deal with that? Should we have them put it back by their building? Although that could cause a water problem for their building. Mm -hmm. What should, you know, where do we put the snow? Well, I, I mean, the, it, it, where we're gonna clear the snow from is the edge of the sidewalk. Because eventually it's gonna get high enough that we're gonna have to clear <laughs> it out of the edge of the sidewalk where the sidewalk meets the curb. Um, t for people to be able to open doors right and so I would my first instinct would be to say tell the businesses to put it on that side because that's where we're going to get it out we're going to take it somewhere when it gets to a certain point okay but, but it, it would just be good to have it have it coordinated have everybody be on the same page mm -hmm. of what needs to be done and it never hurts to remind businesses that it's their responsibility to and, and clear the sidewalks. And additionally, in, in response to the question about getting the vehicles out of the way, my suggestion would be we try the, um, we expect a large amount of snow, please make sure you're not parked in a space on a, on a street because you're either going to get plowed in or you're going to interfere with the trucks. On well, the couldn't we even put some signs up too, like our um, little paper signs that we've done? You know, uh, when we're street snowing, snowing, yeah, it's snowing. It's oh. Um, I mean, they, we could, they don't usually stay very well when it's snowing because, you know, we, we're going to tape them to a tree or something and then they're just going to get wet and fall down. But, I mean, we can try it. Well, can, can we laminate a bunch of them and... Um, I can, uh, yeah, I can certainly talk. Ken Metz is the person that generally handles that, so I can talk to Ken. But I think, it. I do like the idea if we are pretty sure there's going to be a big dump of snow. Yeah, it's when there's those big snows that we we know ahead of time they're right. happening. I mean, you don't want to be doing this for every time they say there's going to be three inches yeah. of snow. But when we know there's a big blizzard. But I do think a big part of the downtown is just, is, is you know, finding a way to deal with the sidewalks and, you know, that, that it just doesn't keep all piling up in the same place and just meeting each other. 
Yeah, and, and what we, another thing we can do is um, a lot of the businesses um, know who their tenants are upstairs in the apartment. So if we send out mm -hmm. an email to the businesses, because I have that right. list of downtown businesses, maybe they can communicate with their upstairs tenants. tenants. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next, is there a review of village-owned property? I don't think that there um, needs to be. I do have a question about the uh, letter that Jason mm -hmm. sent mm -hmm. to Patty in regard to the West South College Street bikeway. Mm -hmm. Are we saying we're forgetting that? No. 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 Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just. Um, uh, well, that brings the, up a good point. The, so, yeah, the uh, the active transportation uh, committee did meet and um, said that they could get together uh, kind of a list of options to help us uh, think a little bit more about this. And um, so that could come uh, at our January meeting. But thinking about it, it's not going to help anything for this winter. Well, Jason, yeah. it's, it can't can happen too, this winter. Yeah. Yeah. It's too okay. late. It's okay, too that, yeah, right. that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. I mean, yeah. and even the Sharrows thing, it looks like we can't paint those, right? Because Jason, no, they're they're supposed to be painting them. Yeah. I don't. They they should be able to still paint, paint them. Those, they just right. we just can't put the the glass beads in them. To that's what them. the forty five degrees was about. I uh, thought that was about the paint. J well, I don't know. I have to check with Jason. Maybe, okay. I, but he also did tell me late today that. Um, Green County Parks did get back with him, and they do not have a, a paver mm -hmm. for the trails. Mm -hmm. So um, he, he did check with Chris Bell, and, and she got back with him today. So um, I will check with Jason about the Sharrows okay. uh, tomorrow. We have, we have a party. We have a oh, citizen. Dan. Question. Dan Carrion, I thought uh, you kind of skipped into the village room properties I didn't know if you were going to open up oh. for the public comments. Sure, go ahead. Is it coming? Okay. So um, I have a, I went through the minutes and stuff uh, from last meeting and uh, I'm a little still baffled why the village is still investing in these bicycle side paths. We haven't decided to do that. That's no we, we're still discussing it. Um, okay. I mean, uh, that's is exactly there going to be a discussion about said. that? We just said we're we're delaying the discussion because mm -hmm. construction isn't going to happen mm -hmm. now. It couldn't happen before spring. The active transportation committee is looking at it, okay, and to make recommendations. So there is no commitment that we will be doing it. Okay. Well, I saw that Jason's getting quotes and everything, and well, uh, that's what you do when you make a decision. You have to get all sure, the information. Sure, 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 sure. Um, when does the active community transportation committee work? I, I saw that there's a village list of meetings, but I didn't see them. Uh, it's it's not a formal uh, village group. Um, it's a, a no, citizens it's group. A uh, what did I, it's yeah, not, it's council. not a council. Um, yeah. But they are going to start publishing their meetings in the YS News. And the minutes are available from their meetings? Uh, yeah, Laura Curlis has been taking okay. detailed minutes. Um, <clears throat> well, you mentioned about ADA. And I wanted to mention I'm really disappointed at the sidewalk that was put in by the village uh, south of Herman Street to Allen Street. It was put in concrete as part of the reimburse or there was some construction going on there and it was put in four foot wide why was it not put in five foot wide the the existing path there was asphalt it was really awful and why not invest one more foot and the same thing goes with uh this uh the cbe utilities i saw on the quote there for four feet this is a new sidewalk if they're going to put it in with the other utilities if that happens why not put five feet that's what the ADA requires. The village re utilities or uh, ordinances says four feet. Pardon me. I'm sorry. There's no sidewalk in the in this the utilities that are going to run down east or down Dayton Yellow Springs. There, there. isn't a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Okay. Well, there's still any area where you're going to put a whole long, say, 1,200 feet of uh, sidewalk, putting in five feet versus four feet is. Yes, it's going to be more expensive, but it'd be much more compliant mm -hmm. with uh, the future of the, the village. Also, that brings up the other thing about the signs. Sure, there's an ordinance for the snow emergency, but if there were no signs downtown, mm -hmm. how would anyone know? Much like the same thing, not using the sidewalk 
for bicycles, skateboards. Are the signs ever going to go back up? Well, there was a, a discussion at council as to whether they wanted the signage to be um, like physical signs or mm -hmm. painted on the on the sidewalk, and I'm not entirely sure that that decision was ever made because the question was how many signs did we want downtown as opposed to uh, did we want to paint on our brand new sidewalks and uh, right I yeah I, I seem to remember we decided we wanted to put them back but we didn't decide how right so and in the the as far as the snow emergency signs we we finally just got the two-hour parking signs back up and they are on the, on the uh, the new light poles which is a complaint that we've received so we do have to find a way to get the snow emergency signs back up before that can truly be enforced that is but those is those can point, be but those are temporary signs so to me those could be handled differently I mean why well, would we don't need those up in the summer so it seems like maybe we could put those up but it seems like it would make sense to have them permanent for the winter that, it, that people know if there is a, 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 an emergency right. declared, uh, you can't park here. May, I mean, Wait, I like, agree with that. I agree yeah. permanent for the winter. I mean, yeah. They go in in December, yeah. December 1 and yeah. come out whenever. You yeah. know, I mean, Jason's going to have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. but. And, and, and then, sure ha and then I, Patty's idea of having the merchants, you know, make sure the people who live above them or whatever mm -hmm. know, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, all that we've got we've got a lot of ways to communicate too. Yes, I mean, we've we got would, Facebook, yeah. we've got the website, we've got mm -hmm. robocalls. Right. Um, so when the arrows, the shared line, lane arrows are put in, are they going to be put in properly? That is in the center of the traffic lane. No, no, we're going to put them in wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I just, no, I just, I'm sorry. No, no, and, no, that's okay, Mary. The only just, reason I just, asked that is, an, yeah, yeah, well, just I, I'd like it if you'd. Rephrase your question. No, I, I'm okay. I'm, the reason I ask that is when they put in the markings for the uh, traffic light detector at uh, <laughs> three different late places, they didn't put them in the proper place, so they had to redo them, and that wasn't funny because it was. Well, it was maybe a waste what I'm energy. saying is that if you have information, you know, to give us, sure, then that's helpful. Sure. As and so yeah do it I mean we we are working we are working with Chris Bongiorno and Eric Oberg on the Sharrows and making sure that we have the correct stencil because we don't want the abbreviated stencil because there are different ones mm -hmm. and to make sure that they are installed properly so okay so we and I think that is important and what this you know brings me back to and I think what addresses some of these things Dan Mm -hmm. is we've been talking about the complete streets ordinance that I do think we need to put on our goals and pass and that's the place where we can you know memorialize things like five-foot sidewalks so if that's a priority anytime we build a sidewalk because mm -hmm. I mean honestly you've lived here long enough you know what happened in that case we focused on the water line project not on the sidewalk mm -hmm. and so you know now we're thinking about it afterwards it's same with the dig once policy so I think that's the way that we can resolve those kinds of things moving forward. Right, and, and I see the complete streets, I see sidewalks and streets, this whole discussion being, I'm hoping, part of our 2017 goals. Okay, well, thank the, you very much. Okay. The, the problem with, like, you know, deciding we're going to put five-foot sidewalks everywhere, the problem I see is, okay, now we got to take a down trees. You know, there's well, these, no, I don't it's think it's a design. Some places, <coughs> some places, I think that is what it would mean. Well, I, I, so there's just conflicts of. May I just evaluate. may I just interject though, Judith, yeah. that if the village maintains the responsibility for the sidewalks, the new ADA requirement is five feet. And also, this is a new construction. I mean, they took they took out the old asphalt path okay. sidewalk, so there was no problem with that. Yeah. Uh, so okay, I was just kidding. trying to clear up a few things. Um, uh, thank you very okay, much. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks. Um, so the list of village-owned properties, I don't know that we really need to discuss much. It's just a, um, a further development of the list um, that we asked Patty to do to show a little bit more detail on 
um, exactly what these pieces of property are used for. Mm -hmm. I think there's more sizes added and things, so um, I think it gives us a better um, a better indication of what we're really talking about. And it does it does divide it up into if uh, one property such as the glass farm has a, more than one use, it is listed by the acreage for that use in that particular section. Okay. So. But th that report also does should help us now think about the areas that we can decide. Right. Number one, what we want to do with it. Do we want to keep it, dispose of it, or what? And I think right. the way the list is now, council members can start thinking about, you know, how we want to handle those things. And, and to that end, the one thing that we did talk about with the glass farm, each of you had at your space tonight, the, the geotechnical report mm -hmm. on the uh, other acreage of the glass farm, which okay. does show a pretty darn high water table. So um, I just got this late today, and um, you each have a copy, and there are some extra ones out on the table. I mean, it's, it, to me, it's, it just it fits into the, the next discussion we have right. about the glass farm. It's not really an independent discussion. Unless right. So uh, in terms of the property report, I don't know if we have a next step, but I guess I, it would make sense to me <clears throat> to look at the different properties and have maybe a paragraph or something on each property saying not only what it's used for but like like the, like the John Bryan property is how it's 100 acres or what I mean it's it's 100 acres maybe I'm wrong I don't know it's no it's 12.1 it's, it, it's, one. it's, one. it's broken up street. into different sections but every property we own maybe some of it's being used and some of it isn't being used and to be able to talk about to sort of get a sense of what's used, what isn't used. Well, so I we thought um, Judy is not planning commission considering looking say, at yes. all of the properties and that. Uh, I okay. thought that That's, was this yeah. was going to be okay. utilized. That, that was this is a planning commission project. Yeah. Okay, um, they they had start. There is a um, parks and recreation master plan that they had done years and years ago, and that's yes. something that I would like to see. Picked yeah. up, and mm -hmm. this would fit right mm -hmm. into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for your work on that report, by the way, yeah. uh, Jerry and Patty. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's great to see it like that. Um, next item of business is uh, just a brief review of the 2016 goals. I did a little color coding, and for the for the no significant work, I don't. I didn't want that to offend anybody, and if it, and I don't. It just means that we really didn't talk about it much, Marianne. And they, I think most of them happen to be your thing, so <laughs> I. <laughs> it's not. It's not intended. To, <laughs> it's not intended to be. Um, but we're. In, they're all in progress. So I mean, this kind of tells you what's been done. In red is complete. Green is ongoing, and. The, the, the gold, I would say, is no significant work, but it's ongoing, is what I would say. Um, so um, I, I feel like this kind of sets the stage for getting into 2017 goals, which I would like to do early. I wouldn't mind coming to um, our first meeting in January, um, January 3rd, with our goals. Um, so I wouldn't mind taking a few minutes. I thought the process that we used this year um, went well. Um, I think this form works really well. So um, unless, you know, what does everybody else think about how we want to approach 2017 goals? Um, I appreciate how you uh, updated this, Karen. Um, and that's about all I have to say about it. But. Uh, so were you thinking that we would start discussing it tonight? No, no, not the goals itself. Just okay. do you see any, do you have any you ideas for any significantly or? different process or significantly no. different format? No, I, think, I think this is a really no. good way for us to approach okay. the discussion. So I, I mean, I would, I would suggest let's start getting our goals together. And um, I, uh, I'm speaking for myself. Um, I think I have a feeling that it's going to look very similar to this one. Um, possibly with um, some updated language related to sidewalks and things like that. 
um, but I, I think we're probably still on very much the same um, the same track. So well, um, and we knew going in right that most of these goals were multi-year, right, and a lot of them <coughs> say 2016 or 2017. So. Um, so what I would say is potentially um, bring language for how we might want to make these more robust, make these more um, significant for moving forward, especially the one about sidewalks, which I expect Brian will recommend more of a complete streets approach. And if there's anything new that you want to bring, um, let's just start filling this form out for 2017 so we can start getting to work. Um, <coughs> so. Any other comments from anybody? Okay. Um, well, I, oh, sir. You know, I just glanced at it quickly in looking at the time frames. Mm -hmm. To me, I just think we should continue on with, you know, because most of these are 17, 18. Mm -hmm. and, right. And let's just continue on with them. You know, I, I don't uh, disagree. I don't disagree I, at all. I mean, I think we can certainly take out the, the things that have been completed. completed but, and yeah. if, there's, if there is, you know, some language cleanup we want or some changes that we want, um, then we'll do that. Yeah. But I don't disagree with you, Jerry. And I, I like what I think you led into about um, the more metrics oriented we can be. Um, I think the better, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of, that's why I think about the sidewalks thing. We've got steps and uh, maybe we can do that with some of these others as well. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Um, so we'll have a first discussion or. Right. Talk, uh, but, but, but come, come ready. I mean, if you guys, if, if anybody. got any recommendations, we yeah. should put them in the packet ahead of time. Yes. Yes. Let's okay. come, let's get into it instead of waiting till our first few meetings. Um, Okay, next is the manager's report. Um, the first and foremost is, as I want to remind everybody, that the fiber needs assessment survey is out there. Um, so please, if you have not com completed your survey yet, please do that. I know that Audrey uh, Hackett is working on a, an article for um, the paper this week about it. Um, the uh, Dr. Cohill, uh, Dr. Andrew Cohill, and Jack Maidam will be back in town um, next week uh, for a day and a half to uh, do some surveys with Johnny on polls and to talk to Melissa about some preliminary financial information. Um, and then at some point we'll be setting some meetings with um, council, but um, they are working on that. Thank you to my uh, Fiber Advisory Board, um, the former SpringsNet group, they are helping to publicize this right now and get responses to that survey. We are planning on putting a notice in the bills that come out, um, the, the t December bills that you will get um, January 1st, if not sooner, reminding you that if you have not done your survey that you will have a last chance to do that. Um, and get that information in. So please, that is so important that we keep that in everyone's mind that we need every business and every residence to complete this survey, even if you're not going to take the service. It's very important that we know whether you are or not interested in doing this. Do they have a percentage to make for, va for validity? Um, we haven't discussed a specific percentage yet. Um, I think it will get to the point based on the number of um, residents and businesses that we have in the village that it will be either we're either going to have way more than we need to be statistically valid or way too few. I don't think that it's going to be anything that's going to be questionable as mm -hmm. to whether or not. I can ask Dr. Uh, Cohill when he is in here next week if that he has a specific number in mind. I know that Audrey tried to pin him down on that when she's on the phone with him and they didn't want to give her a specific number um, mm -hmm. because they don't want to, you know, be held to that. They want to see what kind of response they get. Right. Well, st statistical significance is 300 plus. So. so, but that being said, did why did we need to extend the deadline? Um, we just want to give, we couldn't get the notices out. In so the, the utility bill. In the utility bills. Uh, and so we wanted to have that last minute 
push for folks, so we're going to extend it to January 7th. And just so that you have that last week when you get that nice, brightly colored notice in your bill, <coughs> that you have that last chance to get your survey in if you haven't already done it. Patty, um, have yes. you considered putting uh, this in the paper as an insert? It's quite inexpensive to do. Um, we have not thought about that. We can certainly talk I mean, about that. Like, um, you know, $140 I, or something to stick it in the paper plus the cost of copying it. Um, I'd like to talk to Dr. Cohill and see next week how many responses we've gotten to see if that's, that's necessary. We do have paper copies here in our yeah. lobby for both businesses and um, uh, residences, and we also have a Dropbox here in the lobby. You can submit it online. You can uh, print it out, uh, complete it, fold it, and mail it in. So there are lots of ways to do it, but Marianne, that is certainly something to consider if it will boost our... Uh, or responses. Uh, most of the st things on the uh, report we've already covered. Um, one thing I would like to note is um, Glenn Helen. There are a couple of uh, things. First, Nick Budis did inform me late last week that they mm -hmm. did get the grant uh, for the purchase of part of Sutton Farm and they hope to close on that property in mid-January. Um, second of all, and we're not sure how we're going to do this yet. Chris and I were talking about it earlier today. Um, somehow we have to rezone that property. We're not sure if we're going to have to rezone it RA first or if we can, ha like Nick petitioned directly to do it EI, but Chris is looking into that, I think. <laughs> uh, we're going to contact the auditor's office. It would be my hope that we could do it at one time, well, one meeting, put it that way. Mm -hmm officially recognize RA zoning and then accept the recommendation to zone it. And just read them sequentially. Okay. So um, a reminder that after Thursday of this week, the Planning and Zoning Office will be, I don't want to say closed, um, at reduced staffing. <laughs> for most of the month of December. Um, I will be there to issue um, any smaller permits like for fences or sheds or things like that, but anything that requires conditional use that is not of an urgent nature, um, we'll have to wait until Denise gets back. And also the um, December planning commission meeting has been canceled anyway, I believe. Judy, is that correct? Yeah. Um, last thing is that the 2017 holiday schedule is in your packet. Great, thank you. Uh, Melissa? I didn't submit a report because it's just preparing for year end, so it's just routine stuff, so I'm good. Judy? Just to make sure you check that 2017 calendar, Marianne's already given me some corrections. That's great to have before it goes in the paper and, and all the way out there. Um, and then just because there isn't a council rep to BZA that they did meet on November 28th and decided upon two variances for properties located at 540 Dayton Street and Lot C on Dayton Street, and both were, were passed. Thank you. Um, does anyone have anything to report from boards and commissions? I just have one quick one. Even though Planning Commission is not meeting in December, we have tasked ourselves to uh, take the month of December to uh, individually review the comprehensive plan and to make notes to see what recommendations we need to make uh, in January. So. Just to be clear, is Planning Commission planning a complete review of the of the comprehensive plan? Uh, yes. Okay. So we, that's, and we task ourselves to start looking at it, take December to look at it, make okay. notes. And, and that's forward. going to be with Denise. Do you see the need oh. to, to um, for any additional consultant assistance on uh, that? We'll find out at the January meeting okay. to see what. I, I would imagine some areas you asked, but uh. okay. Brian, do you have anything to report about the glass farm from the Economic Sustainability Commission about the glass farm discussion? Uh, you mean the uh, CBE? Excuse me. Yes, the CBE. <coughs> yeah. So uh, unfortunately, we don't, we don't have our first meeting until uh, this Wednesday. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, the status is what we mentioned last time. We're going to follow the process of okay. the local policing forum. So on Wednesday, we're going to finalize the date, um, make a recommendation about questions, and uh, bring that back to council. So. 
Okay. I wanted to suggest to Patty, I was going to catch her after this meeting, that the um, we that we come up with some recommendations to the Energy Board regarding, uh, you know, Council had tasked the Energy Board to find ways to help citizens uh, reduce their energy use. Mm -hmm. And um, the, <laughs> the discussion has been meandering. Uh, at the meeting, and I and I was thinking maybe you and I should just maybe with maybe with uh, Rick, who's the chair, we can sit down and bring something because it just uh, and I and I I don't disagree with that. I think that's a great idea. Um, I will say that this uh, this month at Energy Board, which I think is next Tuesday, um, it's um, yes, next Tuesday the thirteenth. Um, it's at five o'clock, but um, we are going to have the gentleman from Go Sustainable there um, to speak, and also um, uh, a representative from Xylem is going to be there because they are in the process of doing some significant upgrades to their plant that they were um, talking to Efficiency Smart about uh, some rebates on. So they want to talk to us about how to handle some of the larger rebates. But I agree with you that we do need to maybe come up with some kind of a uh, structure, yeah, might be a good yeah. word. Yeah. Good ideas, but they're kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, looking at the future agenda items, the first one I'm looking at, and I'm wondering, um, Council, do we have time? Um, I mean, it really is. It's only what the fifth of December. Is there any reason we can't? Um, if I send out the evaluation forms for the clerk, we can do that and then do her review this month. And so we can so we can be ready for her contract January third. Okay. You mean, but we're not going to meet this month, are we? Um. I mean, oh, shoot, and we don't want to do. Did you want to discuss? We don't want to do an executive. Did you want to do a little discussion around that? I make other the suggestion. That What's the, what? You have a special meeting on the nineteenth. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So if you would do it before yeah. or after. Do you your special meetings for one purpose and one purpose only? It's an executive session. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't so, put it there. Okay. All right, so you can't do that. Okay. Can we um, have two special meetings on the same night? Two special can we have two special meetings? Uh, as long I as don't it's see why not, because it's actually, yeah. It, as long as it's just advertised. For, does, do you have any Chris? hard burn with that, Chris? <laughs> I haven't looked at that issue for a while, but it would seem to me that it's advertised and you've got enough time to like, get the ordinary notice to it, which I think we do. It's probably okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll plan on, I'll get the uh, evaluation forms out and we'll plan on doing that on the 19th. Um, I say maybe a half an hour before. Um, what time were we, what time we meeting six. with? That would Brenda be at 7? Mm -hmm. Okay, 6.30, okay. We have a citizen. Um, yeah, Dan. Uh, Patty, I, you said the Design 9 people are coming in a week or two. Are they going to be having any public meetings, engagements? Not, not this time. Not this they, time. They will have public meetings before during the process, but they won't. This time they're coming to talk to Melissa about financial data and okay. to, uh, to do inventory of the polls and things with Johnny. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I would think that there may be additional legislation on the agenda that we aren't aware of just as things start to come in. Um, so let's, add, let's add 2017 goals. Mm -hmm to the list and that'll probably take in just about everything we might want to talk about anything else that anybody wants to add for January oh we'll have to have um, an ordinance authorizing the annual transfers the first meeting in January um, emergency yes anything else council I think if we, so then let's dedicate ourselves to talking about the goals then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe we can get them all done yeah, yeah. that sounds good and if that's something um, oh. Diane that you could include in your in your 
write up that we're going to be talking about goals, 2017 goals. So we'd, as usual, like to hear from citizens on 2017 goals. Thanks. And just a question on that. Do you want to review your council rules or do you want to skip, you often skip a year when they Yeah, I think we can do that. Just save it for 2018. Okay. Do you want to um, delay my evaluation? Yes, so? yes, that was decided. Yeah, um, so we, it wasn't decided, but it was discussed that um, the review, everything will happen in July. Okay. Um, Okay, so can I get a motion for adjournment? Uh, be before we do oh, that, okay. since, since we're not going to have a meeting in uh, another meeting, mm -hmm. public meeting, uh, I'd like to wish the community the happiest of holidays and be safe so that we see everybody mm -hmm. back the first of the year and so forth. And, and also, this time of year, uh, think about others. Yes. I would also, something I was remiss for not mentioning um, earlier, um, I would like to extend sympathies to the Young family. Um, Bob Young, Dan's father, passed yesterday. Um, he, was, he was the person who started that whole operation, helped to start that whole, whole operation. So um, quite a loss to the family. So, um, and. I think we probably all, we could all sing, maybe led by Mary, Marianne and Judith, we could all sing, you know, happy holidays. We could come up with some kind of a song to sing, <laughs> but I'm not going to. I will. <laughs> <laughs> happy holidays, if everyone. I didn't have a cold, happy I would sing. Happy holidays. But, okay, so do we get a motion to adjourn? So move. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.